G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you are using this bomber wrong. This is the Canberra B Mark VI, and is easily the best dogfighter at 8.3. Yeah, you heard me say it, and it sounds stupid, but the Canberra B Mark VI has an excellent ability to dogfight, and no one really takes advantage of it. It does sometimes feel like a bit of a whale, but once you get used to it, the Canberra B Mark VI is an absolute well, well, let's say whale of a time. It's got a, f a couple of sort of unique characteristics that make it particularly special. Namely, the two Avon engines give it plenty of acceleration and plenty of thrust, and that massive, massive wing allows it to generate an insane amount of lift. This plane is extremely maneuverable, and not a lot of people know about it. It also has the 2,000 rounds between four Hispano Mark V cannons. This is an absolute beast of a plane. And if you guys would like to be an absolute beast as well, you guys can support the channel with the uh, affiliate link in the description below. Using that, you get a 3% discount at the War Thunder store. And of course, you get my decal and you get to support the channel. So if you would like to deny the snail 6% um, and also get a decal, then you guys get uh, into that link in the description below. I really appreciate you guys supporting the channel. It genuinely makes the difference and I am looking to upgrade my graphics card so I can finally play at 4K, not just record at 4K. It's uh, it's very frustrating not having to put this all at the maximum settings for you guys, um, especially resolution-wise. But, you know, we're getting there, and that would be an awesome thing to do. So, the Canberra here, I have dropped all of my bombs. This is the first thing that you do in any Canberra that has guns. You get rid of the bombs, and that allows you to dogfight more effectively. You can take the, uh, your bombs to a bomb drop, but honestly, I'd rather not be hindered by dead weights. The sort of RP and the lines that you'll get from that are pretty, pretty negligible compared to the gains that you'll get by flying as a fighter. Now, I am going to climb a little bit in this match, uh, but normally I will, depending on whether I'm fully up-tiered or fully down-tiered, uh, I might climb straight into them, or I might decide to take a, a sort of more direct approach. Um, when I am down-tiered, that direct approach is more effective because there are fewer missiles, and the fewer missiles there are, the better for you, because this plane is slow. You will practically need to do uh, like a 180 turn to get rid of an AIM-9B or an AIM-9G. This plane does not travel very far, and so it is very easy for a missile to cut into the turns of your, uh, your aircraft. You need to be very mindful of that, especially when you're in an up-tier situation like I am here. Uh, there's a Shenyang F5, that's a 9.3, um, and an FJ4, he's got missiles. The F86A is a non-threat, and these are the planes that I'm just going to continue ignoring for now. I'm going to look for planes that are climbing up to my altitude, and you can see I'm already at 8,000 meters. I see no other king up here other than me. I'm basically looking for opponents that are you know, lower in altitude, and at the same time are sort of climbing into me so that I'm able to engage those particular targets. Now, obviously, because I'm at such a high altitude, this is a bit of a, a bit of a clown altitude, so we're going to come down to a little bit more of a suitable level. 4,000 meters is more than enough, but as you can see, most of the fight is devolving at sea level. We've got a couple of F-86A Sabres, and the G-91 is more than out of missile range for us at the moment, so they're pretty much a non-threat. Another pop-up here is the F2H Banshee, which is also 8.3, uh, or 8.0 at least. And we are just about to sort of make our make our, our money here, if you will. Um, there are a bunch of planes here that are sort of victims in this case. There's no way that you can outturn them, uh, that they can outturn you rather, but there is every single way that you can and they are in a very compromising situation. I'm going to let the 20 mils rip there on the F-86A5 there, saving my teammate. And then we're going to go straight around there looking for that F-2H Banshee and the F-86 Sabre. I've got my head on the swivel there looking around for him. Uh, and it looks like he is actually fairly close. So because he's at such a high altitude and such a decent speed, we are going to engage. You can see that whale uh, sort of performance there of the uh, Canberra. But... It's not really that bad. Once you get used to it, it is very, very easy to exploit. The A5E is coming in, but I am well and truly on top of all of my opponents. I now have a thorough energy advantage, and this is where we can do basic boom and zoom maneuvers, just like in prop battles. This is an excellent exploit of these planes. They're all energy trapped, and so 
They are going to have a hard time getting away from me if I put the plane in a dive. The only thing I am limited to now here is the speed of my aircraft. And you know what? That's a small problem to have when your opponents are traveling slower than you. Here we go again. I'm going to pick the F2H Banshee to dive on. And it looks like he's really slow. I've popped the air brakes on and he's trying to get away from me, but that is a done deal. Very, very easy kill there. The A4 is ahead of me. I should go and engage him, but the F9F is coming in behind me, and you can see that that uh, AIM-9B is coming out. Way, way, way too ambitious, and I believe it might have even been at the sun. So we're just gonna go into a bit of a vertical, into a gentle spiral climb. You can see the type of maneuvers that I have to bust out to actually get away from those AIM-9Bs, but once I have gotten away from it, it is on the defensive for little F9F Cougar here. The A4E in the distance is looking at me for a head-on. No, thank you, sir. Do not commit to head-ons in this plane. It has a huge profile, and going after TU4s is also a death sentence. Uh, the A4E off to the left there has pissed off, so we're going to go for the A4E that decided to head on me. Uh, I think one of these guys is going to put it in the dirt, but it's okay. We're going to just sort of switch targets midway through, because this is the type of thing this plane can do. We are at 400 kilometers per hour, but we are still picking up speed. The A4 is out of all speed, and we can pretty much just do this all day. The A4, uh, the, the F86A is in a really shitty situation there. There is a KI-61 for some reason engaging him, but it is time for the F86 to pitch up and be victim again to the Canberry. The uh, kill number four comes out, and that is pretty much all she wrote. These are really easy dogfights once you get the hang of it. And this is the type of engagement that you can find yourself in in the Canberra. You put yourself in an energy advantage, and then you slowly work your way down exactly like props. And it works, because this plane has the acceleration, it has the turning, it has the energy retention, and it has the guns to back it up. It's also got ammunition for days. I have sprayed, and I've used a decent amount of ammunition, and I've just gone over the 500 round threshold. In any other plane, I would have been out of ammunition, but in the Canberra, we are barely a quarter of the way through. This is why I love this plane. It is just such a versatile beast. And whilst there are planes at this battle rating that will absolutely eat it for breakfast, uh, you just need to be careful when you engage them. These are planes that are a lot faster, like the F-11, um, planes with missiles, like the G-91s, uh, planes that have greater turning, like the ME-163, and of course, the new Vautour is going to give it some grief as well. But this is a small concession in order to sort of take the throne of greatness in the realm of the Canberra. I really, really do like this plane, and I think it is such an absolutely magnificent beast that it uh, should be given a go by at least everyone. At least. Maybe you should go and spade it, get yourself an ace crew like I have, and you will thoroughly enjoy this plane, simply because it is just such a remarkable piece of equipment in War Thunder that it is able to just do things. It's great. And again, the performance here is second to none. It's those two Rolls-Royce Avon engines that uh, I believe these are the same ones that you find in either the Scimitar, the Swift, or the uh, the... The Buccaneer, that's the jet I was thinking about. Uh, the Canberra itself is, I believe, still in service with NASA as the B-57, the Martin B-57. So that kind of tells you how good this plane is or how versatile this plane is. Uh, these planes uh, had such a high, uh, such a good altitude ability and such an ability to sort of get away from interceptors that it was just kept for years and years and years until the technology was developed that superseded the planes. It's a really, really nice aircraft to fly. It's got a really great history. And of course, the Australians use them, so why not? Again, here is our last opponent, or one of our last opponents here, the A4E. The A4 is a good 10 kilometers away, but I'm really more interested in the, uh, there's a B-57 sort of lurking around. And of course, I don't want to be that guy that goes and sweeps the airfield. I don't have the speed in this case. Uh, there are certain you know, missiles and, and guns there that will, again, eat me for breakfast. Uh, but also, I want to give the A4E a little bit of a chance to get off the airfield and, uh, you know, come away from its defenses a little bit. And when it does, when it's at about the five kilometer mark, that's when I'm going to move in and pounce. And that's sort of what I've guesstimated about here. We're about, I would say, five kilometers away from his airfield. And you can see those those missiles starting to ring out there on the Hunter to, to sort of come and collect him. And you can even see one that looks like it might be even targeting me. 
Uh, it's definitely not got the range there, but it might, uh, you know, make you reconsider moving in on that airfield. This plane here, we, you know, popped out our air brakes and we might even begin to reduce the throttle. You can see the A4 is slowly heading back to the airfield. I think he's realized his mistake. He's been caught out without enough energy and uh, it's not looking really good for him. Um, it, it, he's, he's popping flares for some reason. I'm not sure that flares can really do anything against guns, but hey, I love the flare and I love the dazzle. It's really beautiful. So we're going to keep that up. A4E looking very juicy. I've popped the air brakes back into the fuselage now or into the wings and he's getting really nice and close. But one of the things that you will find is that the rudder and then eventually the ailerons, uh, the, the elevator will lock up on the uh, Canberra. And then you've got to be careful of the G overload. I haven't managed to land a good shot so far and I'm not really sure why. I've, I've goofed it a little bit here. I shouldn't really be goofing it because this plane is somewhat easy to, uh, to, to use and he's very, very slow, and he's such an easy target. But I think someone is going to come in here with a missile and uh, finish him off before he eventually goes down. That is a little bit of a big sad, but you know what? It's something that I will take. Uh, there he is, and there's the hunter. I think he's going to pop a missile. No, it's the other guy here who uh, comes in and uh, pushes him into the edge there. Yeah, it was the FGA-9 that takes the kill. Not a big deal. At the end of the day, we are all here to win a match, and winning at the end of the day is more important than a kill. Because if you win, you actually get more than if you get a kill and lose. So just consider that next time you're playing War Thunder. Our last opponent here is the B-57, and the B-57 looks like he's going to try and drag things out. I don't really like to loiter around these airfields, but I think Skygen should put something in place to sort of deal with this. I think there should be some sort of timer that prevents the missiles from uh, spamming all day long. And I think that it would be interesting to simulate that as a reload time. If you, uh, if your SPAA is reloading, it won't be available to its fullest extent. You'll still have the guns, but you certainly won't have the ability of those missiles. And whilst this has played out a little bit more, the KI-61, poor thing, has fallen victim to the missiles. And it has pretty much left me with no choice but to go in and engage because this is just going to drag on forever and ever, and I really don't want to deal with it. It looks like the missiles are not engaging because they are sort of at a, at a funny attitude. Uh, there's, we're pretty much right above them, but the guns are certainly engaging, and they are not really coming close, but any second now they could come close, and I just need to saw the tail off the B-57B, and that is game. This is the type of airfield camping that I don't really like, but at the end of the day, if you are in a situation like this, I would just consider... You just just leave the match. Just leave the match and take the L. So, moving on to the next match here, we have an F-11. And I mentioned the F-11 is one of the adversaries of the Canberra simply because it is so fast at altitude. So, we're going to go for a quick head on here. A gentle lift up into the air. And it looks like the F-11 is actually committing to a vertical turn. This is a humongous L for the F-11 because the F-11 does not know what is about to hit him. And what he's about to hit him is a bunch of 20 mils and a whopping great repair cost. So enjoy those 20 mils and it looks like he's just going to spin out and uh, be a helicopter helicopter. It's a beautiful sight for me. And again, it is very sad for the F-11. This F-9F is coming in. He is going vertical and it looks like I've pretty much been able to rope a dope him with the amount that he's been pitching up. So we're going to pitch straight down in for him. He is pretty much stalled out and we saw his wing off. Again, a very, very easy kill. F9Fs there in the distance are the next target because they are the ones at altitude. Uh, there is an F9F off to the side there, and I'm not going to really engage. That F2H Banshee is looking pretty juicy because he is the target at the back of the pack. The back of the pack is the one that you target because if you target the guy in front of him, the guy at the back will likely come in uh, and sort of try and save him. I've again popped the air brakes to limit the compression, and the tail comes off the F2H Banshee exactly like it's meant to be. The F9F here has realized that his friend is dead and is coming in, and he is going to exact revenge on me, or at least he's going to try. I'm not going to go into a spiral or, or, or an immediate spiral turn unless I know I'm safe here, because if you do, the F9F has the potential to come in and make short work of me. But thankfully, I've got a teammate around in the Swift to uh, sort of distract the F9F and force him down to altitude or to, to the deck, and this gives me the opportunity to dive on him. Again, I'm popping air brakes. I don't want to be uh, in the midst of compression. And then once I realize that I'm not going to get the shot, the air brakes go away and I go straight back into the vertical to convert that kinetic energy 
into potential energy there in the form of altitude. Again, we are blowing a lot of speed in these turns, and that is something that you have to keep in mind with the Canberra. You can't just turn and turn and turn and fight more than one enemy. If you have, say, two enemies, you can probably do it. But if you have any more than two enemies, you are really going to struggle fighting these multiple opponents, especially at low altitude, because you're just going to run out of energy, just like any other plane would. But of course, that speed is what is going to get you. Now there is kill number four, very, very easy kill. And the F2H is coming. Uh, there's an F2H and an F9F that are coming back, as well as that F9F at altitude. The F9F at altitude is a, a, the immediate threat, but it looks like he's turned his attention away from me. This allows me to strike the F2H Banshee and then follow through for that uh, F9F. But the F9F is kind of looking like the juicier target, to be honest, but the F2H is the one that I decide to go for. It's just a little bit more lead. There we go. He's on fire. He's dead. And the F9F-8 from before has come around and wants to, tas to, to tussle. So we're going to put it into a vertical. We're going to try and break the uh, ability for him to get his nose on and to get a lock. And we're going to go again around vertical and then turn it again into a horizontal because I noticed that that F86F is coming in very quickly. He's quite slow. So again, another kill of opportunity. He is going to be uh, what looks to be quite an easy kill simply because he's just made himself so damn slow. I'm going to quickly get a spray off there and there goes his wing. Very, very easy. And again, kill number six. We're going to go for two more kills here, I think. Uh, spoilers. But the F9F there and the F86A are looking quite juicy. They're all very slow planes. And the, uh, you know, in a, in a dogfight like this, you're, you're not really meant to take these dogfights. These are the types of fights that you really shouldn't be taking in a, in a plane, uh, in any jet, really. Because the moment you start taking lots of dogfights and lots of... Uh, lots of sort of really hairy situations, you're going to end up losing your plane. And my mistake, I managed to get seven kills, which is still really, really good for this plane because it is not a plane that you would expect to be a good dogfighter. And yet it is a better dogfighter than most of the fighters. This is a beautiful plane. I genuinely love this plane and I played this plane so extensively. I think it's a real hidden gem that not a lot of people realize just how good it is. This plane easily my favorite jet bomber in the game and by a long shot it is one of my favorite fighters in the game this plane absolute 10 out of 10 plane and i recommend that everyone gives it a go there we go ladies and gents that'll do it for today i'd like to thank you all for watching thank you very much for your time take care and i'll catch you next time